complete Europe's fleet week about commercial fleets. My name is Steven Schoofs, and I will be your moderator of today's webinar. Today, we will deep dive into one of the most important topics when talking about LCV fleet management, and that is maximizing LCV utilization through flexibility. The webinar is supported by SIXT. And this webinar is, as mentioned, the closing webinar of an exciting week that we organized about commercial fleets. We started on Monday, 26th of April, and today you will live the final piece of information about LCV fleet management. We would like to thank our sponsors, ALD Automotive, Fleet Logistics, Geotap, Lease Plan, Web Fleet Solutions, and for today's webinar, Sixth. Ladies and gentlemen, maximizing LCV utilization. It's really critical for your future fleet management when you have a commercial fleet. And of course, flexibility can help you. And that will be shown by our experts in this webinar. The information given in this webinar is for information purposes only. So should you like to reproduce some of the content in this webinar, then please inform Sixth and Fleet Europe beforehand. Let's now take a look at the experts of today's webinar. I would like to welcome Stuart Donnelly, Yvonne Gabler and Alexander Bonne. Stuart will first kick off with presenting and then interviewing also Yvonne and Alexander. You will have the opportunity to ask your questions to our experts Yvonne Gabler and Alexander Bonne throughout the webinar by putting your question in the chat function of the webinar tool. And at the very end of this webinar, we will take time to moderate a Q&A together with our experts. So I hope that you have an exciting final deep dive webinar for this commercial fleet week. And now the floor to Stuart Donnelly from Sixth. Greetings, my name is Stuart Mobility Donnelly. We have a super exciting session for you today where we will deep dive into the topic of maximizing LCV utilization through flexibility, which we believe will be tremendously relevant for all fleet managers, but especially for those that have some commercial vehicles in their fleet and or those that simply need to use mobility as a means to deliver goods to your customers. Joining me in the studio today for this exciting webinar are two of my most favorite colleagues, which with them bring a great deal of expertise from their respective areas. Yvonne Gabler, Senior Director Special Sales. We've sixed for more than a decade. Yvonne is indeed special in every way, but inside sixth special also includes van and truck alongside replacement business, uh, leasing business, movie and automotive. Um, and uh, I think, you know, we uh, we will hear a really, really interesting segment from Yvonne, where I will ask her how Sixth has supported its van and truck customers through the pandemic to maximize utilization from their fleet by plugging in flexible supply. So really, really interested in, uh, in that Q&A with uh, Yvonne. Following uh, Yvonne, Another uh, gentleman who is not so normally um, in the uh, in the public eye uh, is he is the senior director responsible for mobility innovation with our connected car business. His name is Alexander Boone. Um, also, Alex has been with uh, with Six for more than a decade, and coincidentally, both he and uh, Yvonne started their careers at Six with the former leasing division before joining the mobility evolution in uh, 6th SE. Alex, I'm really, really delighted that Alex is going to join us because Alex is going to share with us how in this new world where we will inevitably all work more significantly decentrally from home and commute less post-COVID. We hear how 6th using its digital connected car technology employed in its highly successful free float share fleet. Uh, there's a tongue twister. Free float share fleet can also be employed to great effect for commercial fleets in vans. So, but first, but first, before we jump into hearing from some of those experts, um, as um they will add a lot of value to this conversation. 
Um, I just want to say that we're especially buoyed right now, full of optimism about the months ahead and life after, shall we call it vaccination, as we all are very hopeful. But for now, the sun is shining where I am. The pubs and shops are finally open. And I was finally able to pay a visit to the barbers and the pub last week. So reason to be cheerful. But let's cast our minds back just a little bit, back to the days before the pandemic. Let's just have a little think about what did life look like before? Can you remember that far back? So I'm going to take you back into two scenarios. The first scenario is um, picture this, picture this. So you wake up in the morning, you're at home and um, you take your favoured method of commuting, whether that was uh, your car, your company car, whether you would take a uh, train uh, or, or any other modality, maybe uh, a ride uh, in a taxi, um, car sharing uh, solution in your neighbourhood, whatever it might be, um, you would commute to work. Maybe it's an office or maybe uh, your commuting to work actually was to visit some uh, some customers yeah and then at the end of your day maybe uh, you uh, you go for some some dinner or a, a, um, a drink um, and you commute home uh, um, and um, yeah you uh, you end your day at home and then that's pretty much um, the day yeah so that's a copy paste repeat uh, for most people and uh, everything was about what I call centralized hubs in life before COVID, yeah, where we work and where we travel to. And uh, maybe the ratio that, that we lived in those days was maybe four out of five. So the scenario that I just described, home, commute, work, commute, home, was maybe four out of five, yeah? Um, Let's uh, let's now think about um, the new life, because um, I think uh, it's very fair to say um, that, uh, you know, despite the transformation that we've all experienced in our lives. Uh, the the reality is that um, whilst we are all very keen to get back to the life that we had before covid. There are many, many aspects of life, ladies and gentlemen, that will inevitably become permanent in the future. And so I think if we take my scenario that I just mentioned, scenario one, um, but as opposed to the ratio being four days at the office, going out to see customers and one work from home day, many people, that was very common. Um, in mainland Europe, uh, Friday was, um, Friday lunchtime, uh, you know, it, it, it was a very, um, very quiet, uh, quiet world. Um, and um, in, in actual fact, uh, I think what we, we may see in the future is that rather than four work days at the office and one home day, it, it is likely that it might be uh, the opposite way around. So let's uh, let's call it one to five. Yeah. So one day out from home where you are meeting, greeting your customers, your colleagues, socializing, a critical aspect of life. Uh, and the other four days you're working from home or, you know, maybe it's two out of five um, Two when you're out, you're meeting, greeting your customers, your colleagues uh, and uh, the rest of the time working predominantly from home at home. Uh, if that life is indeed the case, which for many of us, uh, many organizations are, are portraying that picture right now um, and, uh, and telling the story of uh, no travel, not back to the office again this year um, and encouraging people to, uh, to, to work remotely. Um, it is very clear the need for mobility has is changing, but as indeed my name is Stuart Mobility, for most of you will know, that is because I've been on 
this drive, forgive the pun, to move to this new flexible world of mobility. And coming with that is also that transport needs have changed. Why? Well, let's let's just think about it for a moment. Yeah. Groceries, home shopping, takeout, food delivery. With digital transformation comes a different need for mobility and transport to deliver goods to home. So decentralized, as opposed to what we have been used to, is a centralized world where we collect the goods from the store. I mean, you know, let's uh, let's think about it. Um, our dear friends at Fleet Europe, um, about 18 months ago, put on a, a wonderful series of, uh, of events where the topic of last mile was talked about. And there, there was discussion, um, for example, about combining the last mile of uh, grocery delivery and takeout. <clears throat> but everything has changed because in the past, it was foreseen the future could see parcels, groceries and takeout all delivered at off peak times when we're all at home, the evening, because in the past, Parcels was, you remember, parcels would be delivered to your home. You wouldn't be home. You'd have to go to the post office to go pick them up as they wouldn't leave them. Uh, but now, in fact, we are more at home all day. So what will the future bring? This is why we combine the topics of utilization here with flexibility. Uh, allow me um, allow me to explain it a little bit further. Let's put a, a little bit of context behind this, if we, if, if, if I may. So. I, I give you three case studies which uh, support my uh, my logic um, for 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 more flexibility um, around uh, around the utilization of, of of our assets. Groceries, one of the the uh, potentially leading grocer in my home market, increased over the last twelve months in home deliveries during the pandemic. It, through three lockdowns from 250,000 deliveries, home shopping deliveries, grocery deliveries, yeah, to 800,000 deliveries. That's a whopping 320% increase. That's just one grocer. Very big one, but just one grocer. It's a huge number. But interestingly, despite 320% increase in the number of deliveries, they only increased their fleet by 33%. How is that possible? Well, it's only possible by increasing the utilization of the assets you have at your disposal. Yeah, sweating the asset. Yeah, working smarter, not harder. And from that, uh, that they, they were able to, um, to to deliver to the needs of the customer. Um, I give you another example of facilities management company. Um, quite uh, quite understandably, their uh, car mileage is down by 70%. Yet commercial vehicle usage is up by 30%. So while sales and management colleagues were working from home, the commercial vehicles work smarter, again, not harder to meet the increased demand. So it's really talking to the theme of our webinar today, uh, which is basically about increasing the utilization of, uh, of, of fleet through flexibility. Because the question is, when you have increased demand, which is the case with the facilities management company or the grocer, what do you do? Because we don't know what the future holds. Yeah, We have uh, the scenarios that I described earlier. Uh, today, we're working, um, you know, one, um, in the past, sorry, we were working, um, say, four days at the office or at the customer and one at home. And now we swap it the other way around. But do we know? We don't know. And um, time will tell. But uh, the one thing is for sure that with this increased demand, do you go out and purchase or lease additional vehicles to meet that demand? Or is there a new solution which creates greater flexibility but meets the demand let's think about the fact that the future also shows that many of the companies um, that we talk to 
are not only planning to move to electric vehicles for their cars, but clearly their commercial vehicles. Well, here's another wonderful example uh, of an industrial company that specializes in installation and maintenance. Um, there you have a business which uh, typically is carrying lots of parts around in their vans. And uh, they're working both uh, rurally, but uh, more, more predominantly in um, in city center locations. And um, you can imagine vans carrying around large payloads full of, uh, of tools and parts. Well, we have a customer whose mileage is reduced and we're able to reduce their carbon footprint despite being a service fleet by using storage lockers to send parts out for each job, as opposed to the engineer driving a very large van full of parts to each job in the hope that maybe the problem with the, um, with the, the service uh, um, would be linked to one of the parts in the van. So combine this with the fact that you can then limit the number of vans you have and place vehicles decentrally in the field as uh, as we refer to and in fact sometimes it may not even need to be a van it could be a small car maybe that might be less expensive and then those cars could or vans could then be made available to multiple occupants when needed fully digitally also we're going to hear a little bit about how we've helped our customers uh, to support that decentralized approach to supplying vehicles in the field um, a little bit later from uh, from my dear colleague Alexander Boone. So I think the uh, the crux of, of what we're saying here is the the need for greater flexibility is clearly a, a big question uh, and um, we um, well we don't know what will be the new new normal. Today we live in this new normal but uh, ladies and gentlemen what will, will be that new normal? How will mileages look in the future? And um, I just want to leave you, uh, you know, before we uh, we step into the interview uh, with Yvonne Gabler um, and maybe uh, here, you know, Yvonne will share some uh, some some experiences, some wisdom of how we've helped our customers. But I just want to show you a couple of, uh, of slides on the screen here. Now, this slide here is uh, effectively showing you what a traditional fleet would have looked like in the past yeah it doesn't matter whether we talk about cars or we talk about vans um you know predominantly a car or van fleet would predominantly be made up of um of a fixed fleet yeah um mainly maybe leased vehicles um some purchase but predominantly companies would be leasing their vehicles and uh, and then we have this uh, this small segment up here, uh, which might be rental vehicles, yeah, to to plug in for short uh, short term needs for uh, you know for for, for um, maybe um, new starters or a new office or new location, uh, a new customer that, uh, that the the company won, uh, a new distribution center, um, and uh, you know then. Once, um, you know, once the, it, the, the business uh, uh, or that demand is satisfied, then those short term vehicles would move across into the fixed fleet. Yeah. Well, let's um, let's look at another scenario. Let's look at the fact that in the future, we don't know right now what the, the future looks like. And uh, so let's look at some scenarios, some scenarios, if you imagine um, that actually most organizations uh, are right now talking about reducing their real estate commitments. So therefore, we don't need to go to the office so much. Or if we go to the office, we need a smaller office, which is predominantly there for socializing, not to go to the office simply to work at a workstation. Um, so if we close down offices, we may also have a need for less vehicles, less people. Um, but again, we don't know the uh, what the future holds. Um, the decentralized approach that I talked about, you know, in the future, if we are going less to these centralized hubs, then ultimately we will have a greater need to receive services 
at home as opposed to at the hubs. And therefore, there'll be a need for uh, for an increase in vehicles. But there is so much uncertainty. And um, and I think that's the reason why I share this picture with you here, because here on the one side, the traditional fleet, it is very inflexible. But on the other side, this fleet here is a very agile fleet. So basically, we imagine our van car fleet is on a leasing setup, roughly half of the uh, the type of vehicles that we uh, we had previously. But then we make up the increase and the decrease, which we can do with very little commitment for um, at a very, very simple um, touch of the button because we can effectively increase or decrease those vehicles as and when is, uh, is needed. So I leave you alone with that, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, now I am super excited to be joined here in the studio with my colleague Yvonne Gabler. Yvonne, great to have you. Thank you, Stuart, for the very nice introduction. And I'm very pleased to see you at least uh, digital today. <laughs> Indeed. The same, for, uh, the same for me, Yvonne. So, um, Yvonne, we've faced a lot of changes the last year due to COVID-19. But um, what, what have been the most important changes within the LCV sector for you? Good question. So um, first of all, I think the first surprising thing was that we did not face a decrease concerning the demand of our customers. So in other departments, in other business, we for sure faced a decrease in interest and in rentals uh, last year. I think everyone had the same experience here. But uh, concerning our LCV, our van and truck business, we did not face a decrease. Um, the opposite took place. We faced an increase concerning the demand especially the delivery and parcel providers wanted to have a lot more vans than they usually asked for. So that was a very good change last year. So we could um, realize more revenue. We could uh, increase our fleet as well. So that was a very nice change last year. Um, we did face some other changes as well. So one example would be that we realized a downsizing from our customers. So the customers who used to rent it bigger LCVs went down to smaller LCVs. So the most rented LCV group we have right now is Group V, which means Renault Trafic, for example, or Mercedes-Benz Vito, so the really small LCVs. Uh, these are the most wanted. Um, I think mainly due to license restrictions. So uh, all our customers have kind of the same issue they do not find enough people to drive the bigger LCVs, especially if you're talking about bigger than 3.5 tons, for example. I think a second change would be that uh, electric vehicles became more and more interesting for our customers. So it started in the uh, car segment and now it's ongoing into the LCV segment. So electrification is more and more interesting for all of our customers. And last but not least, the Christmas peak season was a little bit longer last year. Usually we have it like for two months, also due to Christmas seasons. We are talking about November, December, a little bit of January as well. Last year it was a little bit longer. And I think also there because demand changed a little bit last year. So we had more deliveries due to lockdown situation, for example. Mm, yeah, that's, uh, that's very interesting. But speak, speaking specifically about peak seasons, Yvonne, um, within the LCV segment, I can uh, I can foresee some you, you mentioned uh, a, a moment ago. But um, which peak seasons uh, are you talking about? Uh, just just the uh, the one or is, um, uh, are they all year round? <laughs> also a very interesting question, because I think that changes as well a little bit. So usually our usual peak seasons are the Christmas peak. I think everyone knows about it. And I think most people consume there as well a little bit more parcels than they usually do. Um, but second peak is, for example, the farming peak. So the harvest season starting usually end of March, beginning of April and going then uh, depending on the foods you are harvesting to uh, September, for example. So um, these are the peak seasons we know. But right now, uh, as I said, demands are changing. So people are, for example, ordering more and more food to their homes. So nobody knows, is this just right now a situation due to COVID? Or will this mm. be a trend for a longer run? And then how do we then have to adapt fleets? So I think 
the biggest issue concerning these peak seasons is during peak seasons, you need a lot more vans than you would need the rest of the year. So every fleet manager has to challenge the question, first of all, do I know how many vans I need during peak? Can I forecast the peak? And then where do I get the cars from? You can for sure lease or buy more cars than you need the whole year, but then your total cost of ownership will be very high. That's, I think, not the, that's not the goal that you want to reach as a fleet manager. So therefore you always have kind of the task how to manage your peak season and are you able to forecast it very good. So with that in mind, Yvonne, how then can fleet managers avoid poor, bad utilization due to those peak seasons? Yes, I think the first step would be to do a very good and detailed fleet analysis. So what kind of fleet do they have? Where, when are the peaks? How long are the peaks? Can I forecast them? Do I know how many vehicles I need outside of the peak? So I think the first topic is always to do a very good data analysis. That's the key, I think, to everything further then. Second topic is then I know I have a, a need for the whole year and then I have my peak need. I can forecast it. I do know exactly how many vans I need. And then I have to organize it as a fleet manager. And that, uh, that's the point where we are coming into place. And uh, for us and from our side, a Christmas peak season has a good side and a bad side as well. The good side is usually we are always facing more demand than we have LCVs. So for us, the good thing is that we kind of, we can optimize our fleet there as well and kind of choose the best strategic partners we have to steer our fleet into. The bad side is even if we do everything to increase our fleet during this peak season, there won't be enough cars on the road during these two months because the demand is just too high. You can for sure adapt. That is what we do. We are trying each year to have a bigger peak uh, fleet, but it's still not enough for everyone's demands. So therefore we also lose a little bit of the revenue, which is uh, not good, especially from a sales perspective. So. Maybe interesting for you as a fleet manager, uh, how do we steer then the fleet? To which customer do we steer the fleet? And we are always trying to find the best solution for everyone. And therefore we just check which of our customers are strategic partners. Where do we have the most topics with? Where do customers not just need us for the peak, but have kind of a long lasting partnership with us? Where uh, do we have a stable partnership with them? And therefore, then we decide uh, which is the most interesting, long lasting partnership for us. So I would always suggest to first do a fleet analysis. And then uh, as soon as you know what you need, please talk to your mobility provider and try to find a solution which fits both in the end. I think there will be always solution to have a win win situation for the mobility provider, for the customer. And then you can, I think, uh, get the most out of the peak season without having idle vans during the non-peak season because that uh, can be very bad for your total cost of ownership if you have too many idle vans. Great. Yeah, very, uh, very, very sound advice and goes back a little bit to, uh, to what I mentioned earlier about, uh, you know, having a more agile uh, fleet set up um, in terms of that flexibility piece once you know what you need. So... With that in mind, um, if we think back to the topic of utilization, what would be your advice to utilize the fleet best, even you know, if you have a peak season? I would always start with the demand analysis. That would be always the first step. And then try to face every issue with a very flexible fleet. Uh, because in the end, I think what we learned what we learned from the last year was especially that you cannot forecast everything. It's not possible. There will be issues you can't foresee. And therefore, you should be flexible within your solutions. How you then kind of manage it if you need more non-flexible solution, less flexible solutions or the other way around, I think it's always depending on your fleet and what you're doing and how long you can forecast topics. But in the end, I would try to stay as flexible as possible to get the most out of the fleet you have, that you can really use it as much as possible. And the more vans you have which are not used, the worse. 
in the end. That's wonderful. Thank you, Yvonne. You know, there's a um, there's a very well known credit card provider out there that uh, used to advertise themselves uh, that they called them the, the, your flexible friend. Maybe uh, it should be uh, it should be sixth. Your flexible friend. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we are always working uh, on a good solution for our customers. So I hope um, that's uh, appreciated and we are always targeting to find the best solution. That's wonderful. So if I if I take um, one final, uh, you know, word or two um, of advice to those fleet managers out there that are kindly watching us today, what would be the, uh, the, the, the nuggets of uh, uh, best practice from your side? Be as flexible as possible and analyze your fleet down to your demands and try to find a good mobility partner where you can realize the best utilized fleet you can have. That's wonderful. Yvonne Gabler, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Stuart. It was very nice that you had me today. Some great insights there from Yvonne, especially when she highlighted that the peak seasons, periods, as we knew them, are so varied and intensified right now as they are all year round. How tough must it be for you fleet managers out there to forecast and fit the right supply to meet the demand from this new normal? And same time, maximize the utilization of those assets to optimize your cost base. And now, now on to a man that is not typically in front of the camera, but not because he's shy of technology. Quite the contrary, ladies and gentlemen. I'm de delighted we have Alexander Boone joining us today to share with us the challenges with managing supply to meet demand, very relevant based on what we heard before, in a decentralized environment and how Sixt has mastered this with both conventional combustion engine vehicles, but also hybrid and electric with a six share fleet. Alex, great to have you with us today to share some of your wisdom about connected and digitalization and how this can be employed with the commercial fleets. Alex, tell me about the challenges you've faced. Thank you, Stuart, for the introduction. I will let you know my challenges. They are quite big. I mean, we are working on the strategy on digitization of our business, especially in the world of our fleet, how to make it digital. I would like to welcome you as well to this session. Let me share with you some insights on how Sixth is increasing its operations and maximize the usage of the LCV fleet. The two main pillars to increase the availability of our fleet are the usage of the right technology with the right software application. On the technology side, that are co connected solutions that are supporting the approach of basic connected services and advanced connected services for SCV, as you can see in the slide. Basic connected services um, certainly have a low cost level, but also a lower flexibility. It's the base of leverage vehicle data based on cellular IoT network that is always looking for the best network coverage. The aim of a connected solution is to optimize the fleet utilization based on the vehicle position and further vehicle data. Specifically for vehicle data, I'm talking about the monitoring of mileage, fuel level, and safety relevant information as tire pressures. But more crucial for the availability of our fleet, the proactive scheduling of maintenance, repair activities with workshops based on warning indications. Those basic connected solutions are known and are getting present on the market with inbuilt solutions delivered with the LCE from DOM. The coverage on multi brand fleets is certainly not fulfilled and needs especially an extra coverage over third party technologies. With data driven fleet management based on third party and OEM inbuilt solution, you can increase driver satisfaction and are able to take the right decision at the right time to reach the higher LCV utilization. Coming to the part of the advanced connected services, a flexibility with a higher utilization is guaranteed with a full connected solution, 
meaning that on top of the data generated by the vehicle has the remote functionality as unlock, lock, and immobilize and immobilize the LCV. With an integration into a mobile application and the usage of the Bluetooth, you can give access anytime and anywhere to define users and to dedicated time slots, but also guarantee you as a fleet manager a regular driving, driving license check of your drivers. Based on those technology, we have introduced at six different use cases for our customers as digital pickup, digital implants, digital branch, deliver and collection. Taking the part of digital pickup and digital implants, the biggest advantage for that is no waiting time to pick up your LCV. And those LCVs are parked in a dedicated logistic hub, either in a sixth environment or in a corporate implant. This also gives you the ability to reduce your fleet management activities as no centralized management of the keys, and the key handover to the user is also not required by the fleet manager. The digital branch is covered with the advanced connected services. Sixth has launched three years ago a full digital sharing platform with the offering of LCV in dedicated cities. After being registered for the service over the Sixth app, customers can select book and open the LCV fully based on the Sixth app. The restitution is not necessarily based on the predefined restitution zone, but can be returned everywhere and anywhere in the city. This enables us to offer a high flexible approach of using LCVs with rental from one minute to several hours, but has significantly increased the utilization of our, of our LCV fleet. The other advantage with a decentralized pickup process is that LCVs are nearer to the driver's or delivery zone. As a fleet manager, you do not need to return, or sorry, the drivers do not need to return to the logistic areas for the handover of the vehicle to the fleet manager or to the next driver. Or on another example is the dispatching of goods to the vehicles on dedicated logistic hubs. With a specific hardware and a specific app, you could also have access to the rear door to fill the goods into the LCV. With data-driven fleet management, the fleet managers have a significant cost impact. With a digital key approach on top, the utilization is increasing and could reduce your fleet size. The fourth use case is the delivery and collection. In peak demand period to cover your fleet and your need, SIX could deliver by night the vehicles and grant the access to a specific user or driver of an application. So we were talking about everything related to the technology and the hardware, but there's another part that is a software application. The software application is a challenge because it's also to enable the service not only for one type of vehicles, but the challenge is to open it to all vehicles available in our fleet on different brands and different types. Just to give you an example, at six, we have 150 different types of vehicles, so we need to cover that all over our fleet. So a unified and ag aggregated fleet management IoT platform of all the data resources from different technologies and suppliers is required to monitor and have a global overview of the fleet that impacts the utilization and flexibility of our fleet. Over our fleet management IoT platform, SIX is managing over 150 different types of cars and LCVs and based on third-party technologies and OEM inbuilt solution over 15 vehicle brands with millions of data every day. On the next coming topics for our uh, next biggest milestone internally and the challenge that we have today is to offer you as a fleet manager also ELCVs. The good thing is that with the sharing uh, offer that we have in Germany and Netherlands in the biggest cities is that we have more than 1,000 electric vehicles already 
available for our customers in a fully digital approach. And the biggest challenge is that we are um, facing every day is to offer the product for the need of our customers. And this is related to data coming out from IoT fleet management platform. Those indicators that we are using are specifically the electric range of the vehicle. So how many miles or how many kilometers is available, has the vehicle available for the customer? So the customer can take a decision to take the vehicle. The second one is what is the vehicle health? What is the status of the vehicle? Is this vehicle on the charging station? Um, is the battery empty? Uh, do I have a tire pressure issue? Is, can I rent or give that car to the customer? So this is the second point. And the third point um, where this has been and is still also be a, a challenge is, is to recharge the vehicles in those cities. So we're working with mobile charging stations, um, big, huge charging station on bicycles, putting in front of the vehicle to recharge the vehicle. But also what we do to um, simplify the operational topic and the recharging process is that we give an incentive to our customers to recharge the vehicle. So if a customer rents a six car and in the future an ELCV and plugs it in into the charging station, he will get a voucher for his next uh, trip with six. So those are the big challenges and we hope also that uh, companies and, and uh, cities in the future will extend their network of charging station. Thank you for your interest. Back to you, Stuart. Thank you, Alex, for a great explanation. And thank you, Yvonne, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for taking your time to allow us the opportunity to share with you how it is possible to maximize LCV utilization through flexibility. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have heard today how in this new decentralized world where more of our lives will be spent working from home and our consumption of such goods will be from home that the need for both personal mobility and transport to deliver the needed goods and services will mean a completely new way of operating with maybe more mileages and the chance to increase utilization for the commercial fleets. Meanwhile, cars will inevitably see a dramatic reduction in mileages. We also heard how Sixta supported its great number of customers by plugging in supply to meet the increased demand, feeding into greater flexibility when who knows what the future holds. And finally, we heard from Alex most recently about how Sixth combines connectivity with digitalization with our share fleet and how this technology and way of operating can be as valuable for commercial fleets as it can for cars. Thank you again, stay safe and best wishes and I hope to meet you all very soon again in person. Bye for now. Back to you in the studio, Stephen. So, ladies and gentlemen, you have seen in the presentation the interviews and the presentations with Alexander Bonne and Yvonne Gabler that Sixth is ready to give you flexibility for your LCV fleet. Um, I hope you liked the presentations. If you have questions for Alexander, and or Yvonne, then this is your chance. You can ask your question by submitting it via the chat function of this webinar tool. And we will now have an engaging Q&A together with our two sixth experts. Alexander and Yvonne, thank you very much for supporting the Fleet Week uh, about commercial fleets. Thank you also for the insights. Um, we are going to ask you some questions. The first questions already popped in. So without no further ado, the first question, I think, for Yvonne. Yvonne, knowing that <clears throat> e-commerce will not go away, knowing that fleets will more and more need or want to have electric vehicles, what is Sixth going to do or doing to make the vehicles available to support all flexible demands for the customers? So it means, in fact, that you are going probably to need to add more and more LCVs and vehicles to your fleet 
to make sure that all customers can have there is an echo okay can have the right vehicles at the right time is that correct that is totally correct, Stephen. And uh, to be honest, I'm from sales, so I would always say let's increase fleet, uh, especially LCV fleet. And yes, that's exactly what we are planning to do. So um, we have a new board member, Mr. Daniel Maras. He is hi hired just for doing LCVs, just for doing van and truck. And I think that expresses very good that we are very interested in increasing fleet, increasing our rental branch network, and I think uh, that's the answer to your question. So how try we to be as available as possible? We try to have many vans in mm -hmm. a lot of rental stations that we can cover all the needs from all our customers uh, on a long-term base, and, but also from a very short-term base. Mm -hmm. So if someone wants to have tomorrow an LCV, we should be able to support this customer as well, and not just if we know months before what he wants from us. So, uh, okay. we, are increasing. Okay. Uh, okay. Alexander, do you have something to add? Well, I think technology will help a lot in, in, in that purpose. Uh, instead of having those 24 hours slots, you could imagine to use that asset many times in a week, in a day with different customers. So I think technology will, will, will bring much more uh, flexibility in, in those branches uh, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Do you already use yourself the technology that you propose to your customers also to maximize the flexibility of your own fleet within sixth between the different countries, etc.? Oh yes, we do. We do a lot. I mean, certainly we we have a very focused on 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 vehicles, and we're mm -hmm. extending our portfolio also on on van and trucks, and and in some of the region, especially in Germany, we're in Hamburg. Okay. In Berlin, we are offering to our customer LCVs uh, somewhere in the city that you can pick them up over the app and you're full flexible. So, And what we see, there is a high demand on the LCV on a regular basis. So that asset that is used um, once a day in the past by one customer can be used three or four times a day from four, three or four customers. So it's a huge advantage for us. Mm -hmm. um, a second question, a little bit related, of course, also to the fact that you are an international player, that you would like to create a maximum of flexibility for your own fleet and for your customers, is in what way are you able to move the sixth fleet from one country to the other, from one city to the other, uh, to respond to certain peak demands? Um, we are able to move uh, our fleet, that's for sure. We are as well willing to. So um, if we can if, if we can realize it, we are totally up to do so. But we always have to take uh, care a little bit of the taxation issues. So it's not so easy to use vans for longer than a certain period in a different country. So we try to be or to have a very good setup in every country to serve the needs there but yes if a customer needs more vans in a different city for example that's not an issue if we know that up front we can do the logistics as well and move uh, the cars or the vans where we need them but it would be always better to move them within a country and to not move them cross-border mm -hmm. issues okay um the fact that some new powertrains have quite some long delivery times could that be an issue for you and your customers if you work via let's say a system where yourself you would like to enhance flexibility share vehicles look where you can put what kind of vehicle because uh, in terms of planning ordering and so on it is of course not only a huge challenge for your customer but also for you how are you going to deal with that knowing for example that we have now the ship shortage uh, there are things also always happening in terms of uh, supply so what is your answer to that to ensure that the vehicles are where they need to be at the right time uh, I think a very good planning, or we plan to as good as we as we can. Uh, so we try to use every topic we can um, change there. So we order from the OEM. So therefore, yes, um, we are 
as well a little bit depending on the OEMs, but we also try to minimize the risk by um, talking to different OEMs, to a couple of OEMs, to maybe prolong some contracts we already have and which are ongoing. And therefore, with this kind of changing, getting different OEMs in prolonging existing contracts, uh, we really always try to reach our plan. So we always do a year plan. What do we think we need mm -hmm. for the whole year? This plan gets adapted every now and then, uh, hopefully always up. Uh, and then we uh, have our figures we want to reach. And by doing different steps, uh, usually we are able to reach it. Uh, but yes, if suddenly all the OEMs cannot deliver, then I think everyone has to find a good solution. Mm -hmm. um, isn't the cost structure for a flexible fleet, isn't it at the moment more expensive than if you just go, let's say, for a long-term leasing contract? Depends on how often you use your leasing contract. So uh, if you really need a vehicle for years to 100%, yes, then it might be a little bit uh, cheaper <laughs> than a rental contract, that's for sure. But if you have periods where you don't use it, uh, then in the long run, I think uh, renting can be a very good alternative. And uh, I think what is a very good and also important topic concerning rental, um, that you save time for your drivers. If you have a leasing car or LCD, they have to change tires, for example, they have to go mm -hmm. to the repair center, etc. Uh, with a rental car, you don't have these kind of issues. So if you take an overall cost um, overview of the whole four years, uh, then maybe if you save some time, with your drivers, that could be worth more than saving 20 euros a month uh, because the rental contract is a little bit uh, more expensive than the leasing contract. Uh, but that mm -hmm. depends on the fleet in the end. So okay. I think one has to decide, do I use it four years all the time? Do I want my drivers to go to the, um, to the um, wheel change or stuff like that? And if I want to save some time and therefore money, then a rental contract could be a very good alternative. Okay. Um, Alexander, um, what is the main USP of the digital capability of Sixth? So, if you talk, if you talk about, um, yeah, based on, on what we are doing today, I think the biggest USP for our customers, is you don't need to go to a branch. So what we have more, the approach that we have is to bring the vehicle to the customer instead of saying, the customer needs to go to the vehicle or go to the branch. So uh, having having the six fleet uh, LCV six fleet nearer to the customer is the huge USP. And on top of that, what we see also is that you're able also to return that vehicle or that LCV everywhere on a national basis in any any other uh, branches in, in Germany, for example. So it gives a full flexibility on 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 on, on that side for for the customer. So that's the, mainly the the one purpose of the USP. Not no waiting time for the customer, no paperwork, and it's it's full under control, full transparent, and uh, easier approach to the LCV. Mm -hmm. um, is it also the goal that um, those vans and those trucks will be included and integrated in the uh, one sixth app? They are already uh, yes. in, in the share world. So in the in the sixth app, you have different tabs, different approach. You have the rental, you have the share, you have uh, the the subscription, and then you have the ride mm -hmm. services. And and exactly in that share approach, you you have also already the LCVs. And now the next the next integration will be in the rental. So in the rental approach, we do offer also digital vehicles. And now that's going to come the LCVs fully integrated. So customers will select the LCV in that uh, vehicle selection and then go directly to the LCV and, and get it open and, uh, and have the journey uh, that is needed on, okay. a, on a minute based, hourly based or daily based as he needs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, assuming that I am an international fleet customer, I have a mixed fleet of passenger cars and, uh, um, and light commercial vehicles. Um, I work with one or two leasing companies already for my passenger cars, let's say. I now am a little bit uh, impressed by the capabilities around van and truck of Sixth. I would like to work 
with uh, Sixth as well. Do you already have partnerships in place with leasing companies, for example, or other partners so that you can offer a one-stop shop that goes beyond just that flexibility of that van and truck? Well, Stephen, first, we can do it for cars as well, so it's not just SUVs. We can be a mobility provider for cars as well. Uh, but yes, uh, we do have a very intense partnership with Aval, and you named the right word. Uh, Aval Beyond is the corporation uh, which is uh, now starting and taking off already. And uh, therefore, yes, we do know the leasing companies. We do talk to them a lot, and I think we are not competitors. I think we are more selling a different kind of mobility, mm -hmm. which adds to each other. So it's not about uh, being a competitor and trying to steal from the other to share. I think it's being about giving the best mix to the customer in the end. And I think the best nowadays is to be flexible mixed with a very good TCO. And therefore, I think you need both. <laughs> Perfect. Um, a question that popped in is, and of course, this is a relevant one. When we talk about uh, EVs, uh, one of the issues that always comes back is about charging. And if we talk about an interesting app, then of course, we would like to have every service possible in that one app. So the question is, are you planning an EV charging element to your app as well? We are not planning. We have it. Okay. <laughs> so uh, to to give you a concrete example, the the we have more than one thousand vehicles in our fleet, and customers when they are returning the vehicle, they can also plug the vehicle into one of the charging station, and this is fully managed on the app. So he he's he's activating the charging station. He's plugging in. He, what he just do is plug it in, and by doing that process, he's even getting. Um, a voucher so an incentive to do it because operationally we are saving costs we don't need to drive the car to a charging station the customer for, does for it and that's why that's why we have the app and the, the, the process is fully integrated into the app and extended also for the EV so the, the, the process if it's a car LCV it's exactly the same and that's that is something that we're offering today already Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you, Yvonne. We need to end this Q&A here. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the presentation and, of course, for the support. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to quickly share my screen because there is some interesting information that we would like to share with you. In the first place, we hope that you liked our uh, Fleet Week about commercial fleets. Um, we enjoyed it and we are sure that also later on this year we will organize interesting interactive sessions and another Fleet Week again. We would like to thank all our sponsors. You see them on the screen. So the Fleet Week was made possible together with ALD Automotive, Fleet Logistics, Geotap, Lease Plan, Web Fleet Solutions, and of course, Sixth. Thank you very much. And then finally, next week, we have an exciting new commercial vehicle uh, product initiative because at Fleet Europe, we are going to pay attention to commercial vehicles um, throughout the year because we see, of course, the interest from you, the audience. And so next week, we will launch an ebook specifically dedicated to commercial fleets and technology with an overview of new models also paying attention to legislation and the um, uh, incentives and finally the way that technology and telematics can enhance the utilization of commercial fleets thank you very much i enjoyed this fleet week i hope you too and follow us on fleet europe for more information about lcvs and commercial fleets bye bye <laughs>